Maido. Hi there, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to talk about presents. Present o master shimasho. This is the fourth year of the Presentation Japan series podcast, and we are beaming around the world to you from sunny Minato Ku here in Tokyo. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, committed to your success, the president of Dale Carnegie Train Japan and best-selling author, Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. My new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, will be released shortly. Through this podcast, I want to help you become a better speaker who is clear, confident, persuasive, and highly influential at those around you. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn, who, unlike many other podcast hosts, have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on iTunes. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesdays, the Presentations Japan Series. Every second Tuesday, the Business of Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan Series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan Series. Every second Thursday, the Business of Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. This is episode number 252-252. Today we're talking about gaining executive international presence in Japan. Many Japanese companies have expanded their operations outside of Japan to enlarge their business as the population decline guarantees to keep shrinking the domestic market. Many Multinational companies have established a strong presence on the ground here because they like the rule of law and freedom to conduct their business without having to hand over their IP to domestic partners. One of the things which keeps popping up as a request from Japanese and multinational companies here is the challenge of how to ensure their Japanese leaders have more executive presence on the international stage. What do they mean by executive presence? Usually, they are asking their leaders to be better presenters by getting to the key points concisely, clearly, and convincingly. They want persuasion power. A big barrier for Japan has always been speaking in English, the international business lingua franca. Yet, this is not the major barrier to having executive presence when dealing internationally in business. There are two mindset aspects which make it extremely difficult for Japanese executives to operate at the international professional presentation level. One is perfectionism. Japan is a country with no defects allowed, no mistakes tolerated, and no errors entertained. It is a product and service heaven for consumers here and totally aspirational for the rest of the world. The idea that we will make more money if we allow for a defect rate of 5% doesn't exist here. And no, CFO will ever be able to push this idea through the organization. This no-error culture extends to presenting in a foreign language. I had the same difficulty when I first started learning Japanese. I would be forming the perfect Japanese sentence in my mind, all ready to go forth and launch it into the conversation. Only to see the topic suddenly switched to something else. I learnt to launch forth perfect or otherwise. If I ever wanted to be able to speak the language in public, Japanese executives have trouble making that leap into imperfection and so are often very 
very quiet in international meetings. They avoid giving presentations if it is possible. And if they have to, then they love to read the whole thing, either off a script or off the slides. Perfect English, but pretty boring and guaranteed to produce zero executive presence. The other mindset issue is that presentation skills are not as highly valued. In the West, we still hearken back to Athens and Rome, to the great orators and their stirring speeches. Hollywood has had a field day with this trope. In Japan, there were no Mel Gibson Braveheart style speeches being given by the warlords. Battle commanders would sit in a guarded, cordoned off area and receive reports and give orders from there as the hostilities raged forth. There were no modern movie style stirring entreaties while riding up and down in front of the troops, urging them on to fight and win. The samurai leadership class didn't make public speeches. If the local authorities needed you to know something, they would post it on a notice board. Find out more. We come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public programs, but... We also do custom-made in-house classes. Now, we do them in our super-safe classroom. We do them live online, and we do them in Japanese, and we do them in English. Our show today is brought to you by, on the 8th of September, we're doing negotiations. On the 16th of September, we're doing conflict management. And on the 19th of October, we're doing storytelling. Check out our website at www. Dale, D-A-L-E hyphen Carnegie, C-A-R-N-E-G-I-E dot C-O dot J-P. Lots and lots of value for you there. Now, to do better in Japan, email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, that's the Bible for selling in Japan, and Japan Business Mastery, and my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery. If you like learning by watching videos, there are over a thousand there for you at Tokyo Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which is the premier business show in Japan, comes out Mondays. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show. And Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews for our interview leaders in Japan from SMEs all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Super TV show. Don't forget, you can email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. Welcome back. Yukichi Fukuzawa, one of Japan's most famous westernizers, opened the Enzetsukan, or Speech Hall, on May 1st, 1875, on the campus of his new Keio University. It is still there, and you can visit it when travel resumes. We could call this the foundation of Western-style speech-making in Japan. That was only 150 years ago. So compared to Athens and Rome, public speaking is quite a recent phenomenon here in Japan. Standing in front of people and speaking has an element of assumed superior status, which usually requires the Japanese speaker to apologize at the start for standing above others while everyone else is seated. Often, when I was asked to give one of the 200-plus speeches I've given so far in Japanese, a table, chair, and a microphone stand were automatically prepared. 
The idea of standing and speaking was thought to be tiring for the speaker, and it also got us all seated at the same height. Quite clever, because no awkward status faux pas were possible. Being confident and outspoken isn't valued in Japanese culture. Here, we should be humble, shy, modest, and self-effacing. Reading your speech word for word to achieve linguistic purity and carefully displaying no great confidence as a speaker is the accepted formula. Not a great platform for achieving executive presence in an international environment. Can Japanese become great public speakers? Yes, but they have to overcome a few mindset issues first. We teach public speaking here, and sometimes we'll get pushback about the Japanese way of public speaking being different to that in the West. This is a false flag. It is a wily justification for a lack of competence by poor speakers. We are producing plenty of professional, competent speakers in our classes, so we know it can be done, and that Japanese executives can become excellent presenters. There are common basics for effective presentations that will transcend national borders. One of our arrogant faults in the monolingual Anglo-Saxon West is we presume people who are not articulate, especially in English, and who cannot present well, are not up to snuff. Big mistake. Skill absorption is the key. With proper training, I believe every Japanese leader can achieve executive presence. Some may take longer than others to throw off their mindset issues. Gaining proficiency means we will all improve international mutual trust and enjoy clearer communication. This is really one of the last global frontiers for Japan. Many internationally oriented Japanese executives here will eventually catch up in English communication skills. Korean, Chinese and numerous other Asian nations executives for whom the international language of English is not their mother tongue have managed it. International conferences are where you realize the gap between Japan and the rest of Asia is vast. Japanese executives can certainly manage it as well. It might be right or it may be wrong. It may be fair or unfair, but it is a reality. Being capable of giving professional presentations in English is how to garner executive presence. Thank you for joining the Presentation Japan series. If you got value from today's show, spread the love around and share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately apply what you have learned today. Use it and go out there and become a presentations legend. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon.